Hello everyone, this is Ask the Experts. When starting a full-fledged business in Japan, it is very important to establish a company in Japan as a base for localization and business development. For establishing the base, you need to proceed in accordance with Japanese laws and regulations. In this video series, experts in the field of incorporation will explain the advantageous information that foreign companies need to know when incorporating in Japan. In this episode, we will be focusing on human resources management. Experts will explain the topics that many foreign companies have questions about when establishing a base in Japan. Let me introduce Mr. Kami. He has supported and advised many companies to start up their businesses in Japan. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me today. There's so much to do. Which is your top priority and what should we be careful of? Understanding Japan's labor and employment laws and regulations is important, but equally important is to understand Japan's culture, uh, employment culture that exists behind those rules. I see. Working style, environment, and culture are all products of each country's history, and naturally they differ from country to country. And so Japan's labor and employment rules root themselves to the country's long history, which I will try my best to touch during this session today. Let's move on to the first topic. What would you say is distinctive about Japan's wage and salary system? I would raise overtime payment, transportation allowance, and perhaps severance payment as matters that are distinctive to Japan's wage and salary system, as some, some other countries um, do not offer these kind of um, system. Many people are surprised to hear of the need to make overtime payments in Japan, but it is um, statutorily required under the Labor Standards Act in Japan to make these payments. And some companies, um, however, stru um, structure their wage and salary system in a way to minimize their need to make overtime payments. But when doing this, it's important to keep in mind that the company needs to record and track and also monitor employees' time and attendance. How about transportation allowance and severance pay? Um, well, there are no statutory requirements for the employer to pay transportation allowance or severance payment to existing or terminating employees. Most, if not all, businesses in Japan do offer these as part of their wage and salary system. And so businesses may face challenges um, hiring employees if they do not offer these benefits. Under the lifetime employment system, severance payment was made to terminating employees as a reward and appreciation for lifetime commitment and services and the amount was um, pretty significant and um, it was calculated usually by gen um, multiplying the final month's pay, sal base salary, uh, and then you would multiply a coefficient, which was determined based on service years and performances. And it contributed to a, a significant or large sum of money, so it was, it was considered as a, an important source of income for retirement. And in recent years, however, businesses are shifting towards defined contribution pension, whereby employers make monthly fixed contributions to employees' personal account, and employees are on their own to make investment decisions and have the responsibility to grow the retirement nest. So to attract employees and recruit them, it seems important to research in advance what kind of contract would be best in each case. Yes, I would think so. The next question is about health checkups. In Japan, health checkups are common. Are health checkups for employees obligatory according to Japanese labor laws? Yes, indeed they are. In Japan, the law requires employers to provide at least one health checkup a year to employees for prevention and early detection of disease and to maintain employees' health condition. Newly hired employees are also required to undergo health checkup and provide its result to the employer as evidence of their fitness to work. And one reason why health checkups are important in Japan is that employers are required by law and judgment of courts to give various considerations to the safety of, of their employees. And in, this goes back in history, but post-World War II, Japan's foreign trading and importing increased as the country was recovering from the war. And increase in cargo containers resulted in an outbreak of infectious disease and the importance of early detection of disease was widely recognized as being important to ensure employees work in healthy conditions. So perhaps this is a good example of how history 
has shaped up Japan's law and regulations requiring employees to provide health checkups. I didn't know about the historical background. Health checkups must be distinctive of Japan, so I'm assuming many people find it surprising. They do indeed. Um, in fact, um, requirements are often not um, seen in other countries, so many people are taken by surprise to learn of this compliance requirement. And frequently asked questions include um, where to arrange health checkups, uh, what test items to go to have employees undergo, who pays for the cost, and how to treat employee time when they're outside of the office undergoing their health checkups. I see. So it's important to find ways to adjust to new customs and cultures. Yes, absolutely. And also annual health checkups are not provided. Services provided by certified labor and social security attorneys. So obviously they're provided by physicians and doctors. So businesses have to ask their human resource department or administrative department to coordinate with medical clinics, hospitals, and also with employees. And this compliance requirement is often overlooked by businesses that are not accustomed to the working culture in Japan. Mm -hmm. So what basically businesses have to do is they need to um, enter into a corporate ag agreement with medical clinics or hospitals and have employees make reservations with these medical clinics and have them um, undergo necessary health checkups. My next question is regarding diverse employment conditions. Recently, work styles are becoming more and more diverse and employees have different agreements with their companies accordingly. However, if employment conditions are diverse, what are important points to keep in mind? Yes, um, working conditions and social insurance el eligibilities for directors and part-time employees and subcontractors differ from those of regular employees in various ways. So it's important to keep the differences in mind and making sure what employees are required or eligible to participate in when making decisions to what kind of offerings to do, to make. And in accordance with Japanese um, Labor Standards Act and um, Labor Contract Act, regular employees enter into employment contract with their employer. On the other hand, directors enter into appointment contract in accordance with Companies Act and are not governed by the Labor Standards Act. And so directors generally cannot participate in employment insurance and workers accident compensation insurance. So if they do want coverage for these um, accidents, they need to um, find private insurances. And the same is true for subcontractors. Um, they are also um, required to register with national health insurance and national pension, which is a system aside from corporate employees. As another example of the difference between an employee and a director, a director may be held accounted for and be personally be liable for um, the company's actions, whereas employees may, may be, possibly may be um, liable for damages they might cause the company, but in general the company would be responsible for any actions of employees. And further, employees receive wages as compensation for their work determined by management, but directors receive director remuneration for their services determined by the Articles of Association or resolutions in the general meeting of shareholders. So depending on the type of contract, earnings and responsibilities change. I'm thinking we need to take into account wages and director remuneration from a tax perspective as well. We do, that's a very important point. Um, director remuneration requires tax considerations because um, as mentioned by Judge Fro's tax advisor, wages are fully deductible as, as expenses or costs for corporate tax purposes. However, director remuneration may not be fully deductible, so it's important to consult with a tax professional. What kind of issues could potentially be a source of trouble? It is common for foreign businesses to pay quarterly commissions, especially to those in sales functions. For Japan tax purposes, these commissions are categorized as bonuses, therefore fall outside the scope of director remuneration, which needs to be fixed in its amount and payment timing. And as a result, these quarterly commissions are not deductible expenses for corporate tax purposes. And to avoid these such treatments, it may be possible to lump quarterly commissions into one bonus and subject it to advanced reporting to the tax office, which may allow it to be deductible. However, the drawback is that it may not be happy news for the director as they might lose out on their incentive for the quarterly commissions. I see. So it's important to check the details of the different employment contracts in advance. 
Absolutely, and I would recommend um, consulting tax professionals that are introduced by Jetro. Moving on, upon establishing a company in Japan and bringing employees from your home country to Japan, there may be cases where wages are paid from two countries. What do we need to be careful of? Right, we would normally call that split payroll arrangement, where payroll is paid both in Japan and in the home countries. And it's common for international signees in Japan to have these split payroll arrangements. Split payroll arrangements works well where an employee leaves their um, dependent family members behind in their home countries and or have mortgage payments to make as it is more efficient and effective than arranging frequent international wire transfers, incurring wire transfer fees. Under split payroll arrangement, Japanese income tax is withheld from wages paid in Japan, but it is not withheld from wages paid in the home countries. And as a result, such international assignee would generally be required to file their personal tax return in Japan. If foreign income tax is withheld from wages paid in the home country, the international assignee may have to go through double taxation. And it's important to review whether such foreign income tax is refundable or eligible for foreign tax credit in Japan. Thank you for sharing with us such beneficial information. Could you give us a message for those who are thinking of expanding their businesses in Japan? Sure. When I receive requests for consultation, I make an effort to first try to understand the company's business model. For example, the size of the business, how it generates profit, positions of employees within the company, among others, as it helps identify areas to focus consultation on. In recent years, advancement in technology is spurring new business models that are often complex and difficult to understand. However, without sufficient understanding, we may find ourselves in unexpected compliance pitfalls. When entering the Japanese market, I would ask everybody to explain the company's business and hiring plans and seek advice from professionals through Jetro's coordination. It would help us conduct effective court consultation and also identify potential preferential treatment that may be to the company's benefit. Thank you very much, Mr. Kami. We hope you all understood the important points of establishing a company in Japan. In addition to the human resources management video you just saw, there are also videos on taxation and company registration and visas. So feel free to check those out too. Jetro has more than 70 overseas offices to support foreign companies entering the Japanese market and developing their business. If you are a foreign company considering expanding your business to Japan or establishing a base in Japan, please visit your nearest Jetro office or contact us through the inquiry form provided in the description below. Our experienced staff will be happy to guide you through the process. We wish you success in the Japanese market. See you soon.